Hi, everybody, and welcome to Learn Now with Saul Ahmed. I'm Saul Ahmed. That's me. This is my show, 100%. Did you have a good week? Are you sleeping well? Do you have a good diet? How are your pets? How are your children? Do you need to refurnish your house? How's your feng shui? Well, we're going to talk about all that and more, and we're going to talk about learning in the present tense here on Learn Now with me, Sal Ahmed, your host. All right, all right, all right, Sal Ahmed. <laughs> we'll stop, stop here right now. Okay, so thank you very much for the intro. Uh, okay, so Jo Abi Bathori hai, Robbie Wood, who hai, wo hamar sath mazak kar rahe the. He is a writer, editor, or comedian. So, isliye humne socha ki thoda sa mazak aapke sath kiya jaye, si tarah start kiya jaye. So, welcome to the show, Robbie. How are you? Great, great. Thank you for having me. Thanks for the um, intro. That was funny. Uh, so, <laughs> tell us uh, about yourself. Um, so, I was originally born in uh, in Hamilton, Ontario, okay. and uh, I grew up mostly in Barrie, Ontario, which is just to the north of here. And uh, when I was in elementary school, I kind of got interested in in doing theater stuff, and I was always interested in like creative artistic pursuits. Like I really loved to to write and to perform. And then uh, I went to school for acting. <laughs> Didn't like that. Um, and I sort of I went back to school to study comedy, writing, and performance. And I got into doing nice. stand up, and sort of built my career as a writer. And I've sort of have have situated my life around that. Writing is my, my passion, and I love to make people laugh as well, so. Okay, yeah. that's awesome, yeah, I have seen your shows. They're really funny. <laughs> oh, thank you. I really enjoyed your writing and really enjoyed your performance as well. Okay, so I'm just wondering, like, you, did, you said you did not like acting mm. when you went to the school, right? Why not? And comic, and this is also acting, right? How you present yourself and how you, uh, Tell a joke, right? So Very much so. Yeah, there, yeah. there's certainly is like a common thread between being a, a comic and being an actor, and I think yeah. you know most comics probably are. A lot of yeah, comics are in comedy to get into acting. Right? Yes. So, um, <laughs> I I loved acting, but I I realized uh, one day I was backstage doing a show, and I, I looked at one of my friends, and I said, "I'm an actor." And he, okay. He said, <laughs> "Yeah," and I I was what I was trying to articulate was I was thinking like. When I'm 50, mm. I will be an actor, and when I'm 60, I'll be an actor. When I'm 100, I will be an actor, and this is all that I know how to do. This is the only way I, I, I know how to apply my trade, or this sure. is the only thing I'm expert in, and I felt mm. like I wanted to know more about different subjects. I felt like I was kind of limited uh, in being okay. an actor, so I wanted to broaden my horizons a bit. Okay, got it. That's, that's interesting. So how did you get into uh, the comedy in the first place? Like somebody said, oh, you are so funny, Robbie, you should try this professionally. What happened? <laughs> uh, I don't think anyone ever said that to me. <laughs> but being honest, I like when I was a kid, I was I was a serious kid. I was not so much the the class clown oh. until later on when I get bored at the end of high school. Uh -huh. But um, the way I got into into comedy was by forcing myself. I went to, as I said, I went to uh, the comedy writing and performance program at Humber College. Okay. And one of the requirements is you have to do stand up at least once. And I'd always kind of wanted to try it. Okay. But I had never really found the courage. So by going there, I forced myself okay. to uh, to try it. I don't know if I ever would have otherwise. Wow. <laughs> you think you're like um, you, you're a shy person or you're uh, introvert? Do you think I am an introvert? Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, uh, I definitely like I, I don't I don't dislike other people, you know. And obviously, mm. like if you're going to be a performer, you have to have some level of you know, gregariousness sure. and ability yeah, to yeah. deal with people. But I like recharge my batteries by <laughs> by being alone. Like I need a certain amount of alone time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That helps you uh, stay yeah, safe. Be in the public. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, when you say like uh, you enjoy writing more than anything else mm -hmm. in the world probably, so who is your favorite writer and how did you get your inspiration from? That's an interesting question. I, um, my favorite probably nonfiction writer would be Christopher Hitchens. My favorite writer is usually whoever I'm reading right now. Okay. Um, but in terms of like writing essays and things, I learned a lot from Christopher Hitchens in the way that he debates mm. and, and the way that he presents arguments. Um, in terms of my favorite, uh, my favorite fiction writers, there would be people like, like I like playwrights. Like Tennessee Williams is one of my favorites. Sure. Um, I, I love Shakespeare very, very, very much. Wow. Um, Catcher in the Rye is probably my favorite book, which is kind of a cliche. Okay. But in terms of how I got inspired, I, I don't know. I always liked telling stories, even when I was like mm. I, I, eight years old. I found a, a story that I wrote that was supposed to be like a three-paragraph short story that was like ten pages of like going on and on and sure. on. It was like a like a pitch for a movie. Mm. I was just I was always interested in in that, and I love to read. I think that's where where interest in writing and creativity comes from is from is from reading. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what are you doing right now? You're working somewhere full time or 
writing and comedy is your full-time job? Uh, I am uh, the senior editor of a travel website called Travel Awaits, which is... Oh, that's uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. a lot of fun. Man. So do you have to travel for that, like to write the... <laughs> I, would, I would love to get to that, that point. That sounds very interesting, yeah. Yeah, oh man, to be paid to travel. Whew. No, yeah, um, like a, a lot of the people who, who write for, for us, who uh, whose work I edit and who I sort of manage, they get to travel. Oh, they get to travel, okay. <laughs> and I'm, you know, here editing editing their work and, and helping... Um, I see through that process so making yeah. it more presentable right yeah. yeah and writing and you know my while they're having fun somewhere yeah that's yeah. right they're <laughs> they're on the beach writing about how great the beach is and exactly. I'm editing the, what they're writing about sitting in the cold and you know editing yes. it. Right. awesome awesome not knocking canada but of course no. so um what is your favorite destination since you are into uh the travel business and travel writing. My favorite place I've ever been is uh, Italy, where I went to Italy okay. for a couple weeks when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh boy, it's everything they've ever told you. It is and more. It felt like like I was there for two weeks, but it felt like I was there for a hundred years in another way. Because wow, you know, time moves more slowly in some mm -hmm. places than it does. I feel like uh, you know, in North America, we're in a rush a lot of the time. Sure. But like in Italy, <laughs> nobody is in a rush. In rush, yeah. Like all of these towns have like quiet, yeah. and they're like you know cobblestone streets that were built in like the twelve hundreds. Right. So you can't drive in a lot of these older mm -hmm. towns. You have to walk where you're going. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that very so much. So, which which city did you go to? Uh, I was in uh, Venice, okay. Florence, nice. Rome, uh, and Naples. Nice. And then uh, in Germany and Frankfurt a little bit. And which one did you like the best? Like in Italy, the city. I think I liked Florence the best. Florence, actually, yeah. Why is that? I, because there's so much. Like that's where the the Renaissance started. Like there's so much culture there, and that's uh, right, yeah. It's not that big a city, actually. It's only about 300,000 people or so. Like, wow. it's not, yeah, and like, there, it's in Tuscany, and like, there's all the countryside surrounding sure. it. Venice is great, but it's sort of like, you feel bad being there because everybody there is a tourist, and you yes. just think, like, God, yeah. people who actually live here, you know? <laughs> yeah, you don't get to see the local people and the culture. No, that's not right. Much, it's yeah. all, it all feels kind of like. It, Very commercial. Yeah, so, yeah, and like, the real Venice isn't the island of Venice anymore. It's the sort of mainland city. Oh, okay. And the, okay. The, the, the islands, unfortunately, are, are dying, not least because of tourism. So, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, just so, that story. Did, you, did, did you write anything about your. Uh, your travel at that time? No. I have, I have, uh, okay. I have written quite a bit about it. Uh, yeah, okay. like I, it's something that, like I, I did write a piece actually not not too long ago about about the negative effects that tourism is having on Venice, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Nice. So, what are your favorite um, uh, places in Canada? Other than Toronto, I feel I mean, I'm biased. I can't I can't talk smack about Toronto. Sure. Um, I also do love Ottawa, and I I love Montreal. I think maybe Montreal would be would be yeah. the answer. Yeah, most every, yeah. It's such a different vibe than Toronto. It's not that far away, but it's, it's totally like, different. Totally yeah. different. I was there over the um, New Year. New Year. Oh really? Yeah. Oh cool. So yeah. that was like uh, yeah. You're right. It's very different from Toronto, and it gives you a different vibe altogether. Oh yeah, very, very much nice, so. very nice. And um, so, what exactly um, uh, inspires you again? I'm asking you the same question when you're writing the comedy, mm. because I know that comedy is a serious business, as they say, right? <laughs> so it's not like everybody's cup of tea as well, because I think it's more difficult to write comedy than any other serious stuff. Yeah, so comedy, like, I, it always, like, I watch a lot of, like, comics, right? I watch a lot of com comedy shows and uh, comedians performing. Mm -hmm. So I'm always thinking, I know the observation is one thing which you observe around, you know, your, from your surroundings, and then you write it and you create a story. How do you, what is your process and how do you do it? Mm. <laughs> you know what I think inspires me more than anything is, honestly, is pure rage. <laughs> if, okay. if, I, if I get angry about something, <laughs> I can sit down in like half an hour and I will find a funny angle. Right, and the jokes are like to destroy the thing that's making me angry. Like okay. I, I, I tend to, I, my anger and fear are my, are my motives for comedy. Like I, I uh, before I did a show on Tuesday and like that, that afternoon I wrote like a, a four minute bit about how I'm like close to turning 30 and how I'm <laughs> freaking out about it. And like to me it's sort of like a therapeutic thing. The best stuff sure. comes from like something that you absolutely need to work out of yourself somehow, okay. I think. That's very interesting. <laughs> My own neuroses is yeah. the, the shortest. <laughs> That's very, very interesting. Um, so at this point of time, we'll take a quick break. Sure. Okay. So jaldi jaiye break lijiye aur phir wapas aate hain aur Robi se isi tarah maze maze ki baatein karte rehte hain. Take a break. Gold house, gold jewelry ka hai best place. Gold house, purity, quality, bhado 
Now open biggest store of 22 and 24 carat gold jewelry in Malton Gold House Jewelers New collection just arrived from Dubai Pakistan and India call Shahid or Junaid 9056720786 Purity is guaranteed Gold House Jewelers Oh it's so light I love it Unlocked Android phone Two SIM card slots for two numbers and travel needs 13 megapixel camera with 1080 HD recording. 16 gigabyte internal memory which is expandable for more photos, videos and music. Over 250 stores to open by 2018. K-Mobile this is the world of internet. You have everything on your computer and mobile screen. If you wish to promote your business through internet, especially to perfect target market, then you have just one reliable name, NJ Marketing. Offering various marketing solutions like social media marketing, telemarketing, email marketing, search engine optimization, graphic designing, web designing and development, and mobile application development. So call now at 647-824-1485 or email email at njmarketing15 at gmail.com or log on to njmarketing.ca We at Altbarka Travel are passionate about our clients' entire journey from dream to experience to memory. We are not only the number one Umrah agent in Canada, but also guarantee the cheapest airfare to Pakistan, India, Middle East and Europe. Albarka Travel, combining your ideas with its experience and expertise to deliver you the most enjoyable travel experience and vacation packages possible. Get in touch at 905-232-6566. Albarka Travel, explore the world with us. ہم نے اپنی کامیابی سے بڑھ کر جیتا ہے اپنی کمیونٹی کا اعتماد اور بھروسہ واجد ملک اینڈ ٹیم اے ٹیم آف ٹاپ اف دا لائن ریئل اسٹیٹ اینڈ فائنینشیل ایڈوائزرز ان جی ٹی اے فرام کمرشل ٹو ریزیڈینشیل یعنی آپ کے پہلے گھر سے کامیابی کے انتہا تک ہر قدم آپ کے ساتھ واجد ملک اینڈ احسان ولی کال ناؤ فور ون سکس ایٹ ٹو سیون تھری 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 اور وزٹ واجد ملک ڈاٹ کام کیا آپ جانتے ہیں کہ مارکیٹ میں دستیاب عام ریسیپی مسالوں میں کیا شامل ہے تو سنیے ایم ایس جی ہائیڈرولائز سویا پروٹین آرٹیفیشل کلرز آئل شوگر اور پریزرویٹیو یہ سب ہیں سلو پوائزن مگر اب صحت ہے آپ کے اپنے ہاتھ میں خالص قدرتی اجزاء سے تیار کردہ حبیب ریسیپی مسالوں کی صورت میں جن سے بنے کھانے لذت کے ساتھ ہیں صحت کی ضمانت نو ایم ایس جی ایڈڈ گلوٹن فری یعنی زندگی کی خوشیاں حبیب ریسیپی مسالوں کے ساتھ ویلکم بیک ٹو لرن آؤ وٹ سیل احمد ہمارے ساتھ آج موجود ہیں رابی ووڈس اور یہ ایک رائٹر ہیں اور ایڈیٹر ہیں اس کے ساتھ ساتھ یہ کمیڈین بھی ہیں تو ہم ان سے اپنی گفتگو کا سلسلہ ایسے جاری رکھتے ہیں اور ان سے جانتے ہیں کہ ان کا اس سارے معاملے میں ایکسپیرینس کیسا رہا کیونکہ اگر آپ اس سائٹ پہ جانا چاہتے ہیں اس کریئر کو اپنانا چاہتے ہیں تو اس کے لیے بہت ضروری ہے کہ ہمیں پتہ ہو کہ ہم نے کون سا راستہ اختیار کرنا ہے جو کہ بنیادی مقصد ہے اس پروگرام کا بھی اور اس کے ساتھ ساتھ جو ہے ہم آپ کو ایسے لوگوں سے ملاتے ہیں جو کہ تھوڑے سے انکنونشنل کریئر کو بھی انہوں نے چوز کیا ہوا ہے اور اس پہ کام کر رہے ہیں تو ہماری اس انکنونشنل کریئر کی جو سیریز کا یہ چوتھا شو ہے اور ہم اپنی گفتگو کو جاری کرتے ہیں ایک بار پھر روبی کے ساتھ ویلکم بیک روبی Thank you. Thanks for being with us again. So uh, tell us about your education, like what kind of education uh, did you get to get into this field? Mm -hmm. So I went to York University uh, okay. for, originally I wanted to be an actor, that's what I wanted to do. I was cast in a school play when I was 13 and I fell in love with it, it just sort of made sense. Wow. And so I pursued that all through high school, I went to York University for acting and I was not super crazy about uh, the program once I got into it. It was very, very like strict and regimented and I felt kind of... Um, 
oppressed, I guess. Oh, really? It was, okay. yeah, I don't want to like, I don't want to smack talk them too much, but you know, I, I wasn't for me. And so I, I went and tried uh, psychology. That wasn't for me either. I finished my theater degree. Mm. Um, and then later on, I went back to Humber College to study comedy, writing, and performance, okay. which was much more up my alley because it focused also on, uh, mm. on writing, which, as I mentioned, is, is okay. really what I'm most interested in. So that was a nice mix for me. Right. So uh, how, do you, how do they teach you the, to write the comedy? Like they, how, how does that work? Mm. That, a very good question. I mean, mm. because it seems like something like, how can you, how can you yeah. teach someone what a joke is? You either yeah. it's funny or it's not funny. I think it's really like... <laughs> right. So like, I, I think... The, the best way the best way to do it is you can you can teach people how to use structures hmm. like how the structure of a plot works like how sure. what kind of how does this sketch work how how do you set up what's at stake in the sketch how do you introduce the characters how do you sort of streamline what you're trying to do you can teach all of that technical stuff you can't teach like how to create Con the content of the sketch that is funny, or like tell someone what their sense of humor should be. Sure, yeah. I don't think you can you can improve the way that they're doing the thing that they're doing. Yeah. And so I think that's the that's the difference. Okay. Yeah. You know. Because it's very personal, like how you yeah. tell a joke or how you look at the things, like which is funny. Yeah, I mean it's your it's your point of view, right? And I think exactly. like if you're trying to change someone's point of view by teaching them, yeah. I think you're you're not. You're trying to impose yourself on them rather than make them the best version of themselves. And for, for the most part, the teachers at Humber did a great job of doing that, that latter thing, of helping people be the best version of themselves. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So are uh, you planning to join TV or write for TV or film? I would love to. I've done, like, I've written spec scripts and pilots and things. It is, it is quite difficult, but that will, that's my ultimate dream is to, is to write for, for television. If I, if I could do what you do. I would be very happy. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about it after the show. Yeah. No, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure, man. Yeah. And um, um, that's amazing, yeah. So you're into movies as well, films? I do like movies. I like TV more than movies, I would say. I think we're really? in a golden Why age. Why is that? I think we're in a golden age of television. I think... That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Right now? Yeah. There's so many great shows. That amazing like, TV. People tell me all the time, you have to watch that. I, I, like, yeah. if, I, if I watched all the things that are great, I would mm. never leave my apartment, you know? <laughs> Whereas, like, with movies... Movies, I honestly think we're kind of at a at a nadir with movies. I feel like yeah. I feel like we're sort of in a graveyard where everything is a reboot or a remake of something that has been done before. I and mean, the comic movies. Yeah, yeah, or even just like uh, you know trying to do like a live action Kim Possible, which is an animated show. Like exactly. it just feels like nobody wants to take a risk on anything new. It's just yeah. sort of uh, repaving old road, and I, I think that's that's a very bad sign. But television is. Yeah, it's terrific. There's that's true. That's yeah. true. So, which one is your uh, favorite TV show? Oh God. Okay, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite comedy that is on the air right now is uh, Veep, which is on HBO. That's really good. Yeah, that's a great show. Yeah, sure. Julia Louis Dreyfus. Yeah. Um, drama. Oh boy, I would have said Game of Thrones. That last season kind of killed me. It wasn't so great, but I'll still say, I'll still say okay. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Wow, great. So we have a big, huge Game of Thrones fan here. <laughs> okay, like everybody else. And um, um, since you are a comedian as well, so who is your favorite comic? Or comedian? My favorite comedian uh, has always been uh, George Carlin. Okay. Because uh, I, I love the way that, that George Carlin, he's obsessed with, with language and like breaking down the meanings of things that people say and mm -hmm. sort of, he's a, he uh, is the master, I think, of of making a meal out of very minor annoyances. And I, I do that myself. I get very angry about minor things. Sure. <laughs> and uh, so I identify with, uh, with George Carlin in that respect. I also love Chris Rock. Chris Rock is one okay. of my favorite comics. You like him? Yeah. And what do you like about Chris Rock? The way exactly. Chris Rock does uh, bits a lot of the time, like the way he'll do a joke is it's like an essay or something where he'll, mm. he'll make a point and then he'll make uh, a joke about it. And then, but he always will come back to the point that he's trying to drive home. Sure. And he keeps like proving the point that he's making so many different ways that you just have to applaud. You know, he, he, That's true. Yeah, he's, yeah. Like a, he's like an essayist who performs his essays. I excellent, think. excellent. So, um, so what, what is your major project you're working on right now? 
Um, I'm I am working on writing a, a novel, which I oh that's nice. It's so it feels embarrassing to say that out loud. Why is that? Because I feel like everybody is. <laughs> <you know? laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's I, every uh, uh, I think uh, writer's dream to write the novel. Yeah, 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 and it's something that I never thought I had the attention span for because mm. it's a long-term project. Like I've sure. written plays, but like I can write a. I used to like sometimes write a play in a weekend, like sit down and just bang it out. Whereas yeah. with a novel, you have to plan more, and even just as a writing exercise. It's better for me and research as well. Yeah, research, yeah. and think about where going where it's it. going and like I'm am so impetuous and I have such a short attention span. It's a good it's a good um, exercise I yeah. think for people who are who want to be writers because you do have to focus and discipline yourself because at the end of the day nobody's going to make you do it. Sure. Right? And can you share with us like what kind of like what is the genre of the novel? Um, if you ever read American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis, uh, except it's not about a serial killer, it, but it's it's a a first person uh, narrative. What I want what I wanted to write about is I feel like we're living in a time where um, we're we're all sort of rootless. Things are changing so quickly that it's kind of hard to to have a sense of any kind of deeper meaning or connection to any kind of like tradition or anything that you could hold on to that, that gives your life uh, meaning or context. Sure. It, feel, mm -hmm. it feels like we're living in a time that is devoid of context. And that's sort of what it's, it's about. It's, it's just about uh, this uh, young man who is uh, affluent, who is living by himself and is super alienated from everyone around him. And who I, th I think what it's really is about is him trying to make a connection to somebody, anybody, to have a, a meaning, to feel like... Um, to feel like he has a meaningful connection to the world around him, and uh, I think that that's something very that, interesting, actually. Well, I think I think that yeah. that's a problem that a lot of people have, which is why mm. people are interested so much in like self-help or, or any of these. Sorts exactly. Of things. Yeah. People feel, I think, atomized and alienated from each other. So that's what it's. That's what excellent. I'm to excellent. Very good I'll answer. Make it funny that. too. <laughs> <laughs> you must. <laughs> yeah. I really love your sense of humor, and it's real, Thank you. you write really funny uh, stuff. So, um, would you like to share any jokes with us, or it's too annoying to ask? Yeah? I do sometimes, like when people ask that at a, at a party, whatever it is, sometimes it's annoying because I never know what to what to say, hmm. or what they might find funny. Sure. Um, but sure, I. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I wrote this like a year ago okay. when I didn't have a I didn't have a job, uh, and uh, I was uh, watching uh, the show Dogs with Jobs. You ever seen? It's about these dogs and, and uh, they have jobs. And I was about three hours into watching that show before I realized that I don't have a job. And <laughs> okay, that, that's interesting. That's yeah. the premise of the joke, it goes on. But you know, like, I, it happened, I was like, oh my God, the, I'm being outdone by these, these animals that are bred to be subservient. And like, they, this dog is like saving kids' lives and like I'm sitting here eating Pringles, watching. <laughs> Feeling jealous, feeling feeling undermined by the dogs. And Excellent. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Yeah. Comes from a real place. You that's know? definitely <laughs> funny. That's definitely funny. Um, so thank you so much for being on our show, uh, Robbie. And um, I really uh, appreciate your time. And uh, I hope like our audience also, uh, they will learn a lot from today's Robbie's uh, conversation. Because what we want to tell you is that you want to show options that you can go to different professions. So Robbie is a writer, he also writes a comedy, he also writes a comedy, he also writes a comedy, he also writes a comedy. If you want to follow them, do you have any website where they can follow you on? Or any I do not have my own place? website, no, but they can, your, follow, your me. They can uh, follow me on Twitter. At, at Wabi Roods, if they want. It's the, it's okay. <laughs> sure, you. excellent. So, this is our show. We will see you in the next video. And if you have any questions about your career or any kind of education, if you have any questions, do uh, write to us or write to us. Tell us in our comments. You can leave your comments. Thank you very much for watching our show. We will see you next week.